Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ryan. And in today's video, we're heading downtown right now to do a curb. It's a 200 linear feet curb. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do the demolition. We're gonna remove it because the, the one that was there before it it, um, it cracked because of the steel. Um, there's some pearl steel inside there. So we're gonna we're gonna do our demolition. We're gonna farm and pour um, and finish. So stay tuned and try and watch the video till the end. I have a special thingy that I'm gonna share with you guys later on in the video. Um, let's dive right into the video, guys. We'll get this thing popping. As you see, we're starting from up here. We have 200 feet of curve wall. So we're gonna start from here. And we're gonna work our way go all the way up. Past that cone there, go all the way up. So it's a lot of demolition we have here. I'm thinking to, to rent a, a compressor, a air compressor jacker, man. But I'm just keep uh, I'm just going because uh, this building here we're not allowing to work here during the daytime. So we're here we're, we're doing it in the night. So we're working in the night to try and, and get the demolition complete. We're in the heart of downtown Toronto right now. Look how beautiful that is, guy. Look at that guys. Time. We're here right now. We're on a finishing of the camera. And we're downtown. Beautiful view guys. I'll give you guys a view later on. So I find a technique that you could use to get it to, to, to kind of break up a bit easier. As you see, I use a big sledgehammer and um, I, I smash it up a, a little bit and then I use my jackhammer. After, it's, it's more easier to, to, um, to, to break it up after that, to so try that. <laughs> As you see here guys, I'm basically doing the, the demolition 
the idea is to try and remove the concrete right around the steel we want to try and get our, our um, new concrete right around so I try to clear everything right around and you want to go through like I mentioned earlier and make sure you, you, you check for your rebar and cut all the areas that are rotten and um, because if you don't later on it's gonna crack because the concrete won't stick onto the rebar if it's rotten so you want to make sure you remove the rotten area else later on you're gonna have the same problem another four year come back and do the repair here again so do it right they did here okay guys look at this this steel is corroded and the guys as you see the previous guy here instead of he's cut it off you wrap a piece of plastic around it so once the steel is corroded like this you want to make sure you cut it off and join it because if you to cast a steel like this that's corroded like this in the concrete it's gonna crack and open if you go down there right now I could show you let's let's go down here and I show you so for example this steel here is corroded and as you see you see it, the concrete itself start to, to let loose it won't hold on to the, the steel once it's corroded so once you're doing any form of repair and the steel is corroded you want to cut it off before you put your concrete on because it's going to be the same problem you're going to have later on where it's going to get loose because of the corrosion that is here so you want to make sure you cut it off you could see here this is bleeding Clearly this is telling that it's corroded because they cast it in and didn't cut it off. Do the job right. Once, right. Okay guys, let's carry on. As you see here, we still have uh, maybe a hundred or So we we'll finish our demolition now guys as you see. So we're going to um, replace this, this steel that, um, that as you can see there those are curled rotten. So we're going to cut it out and change it and put in new one. And then we're going to rebuild. You see what I'm doing I'm moving one of the stone go all the way down um, so that I can um, screw my farm onto the, the curb. So now we're gonna do. So today we're here now to do our steel up. We're gonna do. We're gonna tie up our, our rebar. Usually where we have a, a joint, for instance, over here. So you see here we break it. Uh, so now we're gonna take. So here is where we're gonna make our cut. So for our rebar. We wanna, we wanna start the joining right here. So you wanna put one here and put another one right here. So later on after we put our curb, we can come back and cut our curb right here for a control joint. So, so it, we're gonna tie it just like that. This one I'm not gonna use, but I'm just showing it for demonstration because as you see, I have a rotten, it's corrosive here. So, and then from here on, we're gonna measure another 20 feet and we're gonna break it just like this again and continue go all the way up to um then we're gonna continue like i mentioned guys earlier you want to stay away from as you see this point here this is where we're gonna make our cut later on after our castle or curb 
two reasons we don't want to have our steel it's easier for us to cut it right off and another reason you don't want to bring the steel too close to the hedge because later on if it start to corrode it's gonna bleed through the hand so you want to stay away at least a inch and a half in my opinion that way um, and for the top you don't want to go as close to the top you want to stay at least an inch and a half from the top down into the concrete so you usually want to try to get it in the center of the concrete rather rather than to have it um, closer to the hedge or down in the bottom it hold more strength to have it in the center so we're just gonna tie our rebar now and then we're gonna try and keep it in the center like so Tie your steel all guys, you wanna wrap it. Wrap it around like so. Pull on it tightly. But you wanna put force down on the steel with your nipper. Basically you put the back force down and then twist it. While you twist you pull you, you pull the, the force up. It's still not a one. So guys as you see those the top of this is started to corrode started to rotten we're gonna cut it off here cut this off here and we're gonna cut that one off as well so we're gonna go through and cut them off because we don't want them to bleed later on and our our new um, concrete so we're gonna make sure we cut them off okay guys so um, you know we're gonna start to cut off the head of our, um, of our rebar So as you see that's my uh, my softboard. We're gonna put our softboard right here. It's gonna be rest flush with the, the sidewalk. And then my concrete gonna go right here, come right out. That's where the curve gonna be. Um, just in line. This one as you see this curve is on um so we're gonna have the same go all the way down it's 202 linear feet go all the way down there. So we are already we finished install our rebar. Okay guys, so I start my farming right now. What I do, um, as you see we have a we have a 45. So what I do here I uh, I run my level to get the same level. As you see I try to run the level from the, the, the previous um, from the walkway get to the same reveal and then I, um, I bring this up and take the same measurement which this measurement here is six inches here is six inches so what I did I, I, I measure from here over to this to get the same six inches and then I'm gonna continue you see what I mean as we go uh, as we go along. So as you see guys, we run our level right here. To make sure we get the, this is gonna be our hedge. We wanna make sure our hedge is, is flush. We wanna get the same reveal as the previous curb that we have there. So guys, as you see, I cut this one. Because the full one reach right out here and I want to use this as my guide to continue to get the same reveal from this one and use this as the same level go all the way through. I'll put it here just so I have it. Um, Fighting. So 
guys, as you see, I leave this here and I cut this off so I can continue to get the same form or the formula. You see here now? So now I'm just gonna tell me that I need to bring this board up and then I continue with the same method, the six inches with the same level from the after that um same level from the previous um sidewalk. So we wanna make sure we line up here so that it locks in place. Now we're gonna put a screw. Later on, I'm going to strap them over like this. Strap on the top of the concrete, come right over on top of my um, my rock here. So, so after we're going to run a line here and make sure everything is 100% um, straight, and then we strap it right over on the concrete. You can see where, what I mean by when I get there. So, so guys, we want to check to see if uh, of our board is straight. If you have a belly, you want to turn the belly up in the air instead of down because it's going to cock up. After you can use the, the strap and push it back down. So let's look for that just in case. Okay, so here this one flush right here. So what we're going to do now, we're going to cut it in half so we can use this as our guide to continue. So as you see, we cut them in half. Now we're going to use piece here, then we're going to use another full one over there. And carry on. Good. Hey guys, if you get involved from this video, go ahead and hit that like button. It really help you to promote the video so that Harris can see what I learned from as well. Thank you. So I put my hand on the inside here so that I can feel the groove. The idea is to try and get it to flush with the inside, the edge of the inside. That way after we cast our curve, our line is 100% straight all along. So I put my hand as a gauge to feel it to make sure this one flush with the inside of the edge of this one. What I did every now and again, my starting point down there, I catch it from the previous curve. The measurement here is water every now and again you want to check to make sure you have this on the right angle so if you measure from here over you know exactly that's the, the same angle because we're going after the measurement which is two quarter of an inch okay so what i did i run my level on top of the sidewalk i make sure it sit flat and then i try to get my curve lined up the inside form the inside edge is going to be the the inside of my curve and then once I do that, I know exactly it's lined up. Some part is lower, I try to get to higher parts. So it's better, my curve is higher than it's lower down here. So some here, is, I'm gonna use a hedger on the inside, which is gonna look nice and straight afterwards. So as you see guys, you wanna check to make sure we have our three quarter hinge. As you see here, it's three quarter. This is the same measurement we have all the way down there where we start and we're working from the previous curb the same pattern the same um, um, angle that it's on right now and it's three quarters so every now and again you go and you check to make sure you have the same thing so guys as you see we reach right to the end right now we just need to put out for a strap right now to line up to make sure if there is any um that we need to pull out so as you see we'll run our string line now you know how the, the, the lumber is sometimes it tends to, 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 to bend up so you want to go through and check like for instance here 
for instance here. So now we gotta, whenever we're doing horse chopping, we know we need to raise this side up a little bit. Down here we need to lower it. So this is the purpose of, of putting the string line. have as straight as possible as we can get it. Across 